Hi there, this is Perry Mason. And here today is one of the more useful videos. I've been promising you guys for a while. I know a couple of you guys have been asking. This is a 12 bolt that I got for $280. It had 273 gears and drum brakes. I am putting it in my 67 GTO clone. And uh, I bought 256 gears for it. Some of you guys know the backstory to that. And I bought this brakes off an LS1 Camaro, 98 through 2002. And I will show you, step by step, exactly how to put LS1 Camaro brakes on the back of any GM rear end, be it an S10, be it your 80s Camaro, be it my Firebird, Pontiac's a little bit different, so be it a 68 Camaro, or uh, a 10 bolt, 12 bolt, as long as it's a passenger car or a small truck rear end, it doesn't matter. The actual braking flanges are the same. So, here's what I'm here's uh here's what I'm gonna show you today. This is the stock axle for the 12 bolt for a 69 Chevelle SS. And it has studs that are too short for this brake application. This one that I've already converted, I will show you how later in the video. I've converted to longer studs so I can use this brake. Part number for the studs that I use, and I've used them, they're, they're only $2 each. Uh, a box of 10, here's the part number. Dorman, made in America, 610-157. I've had good luck with them, they're dirt cheap. They're, just, uh, they're not half inch studs, so I mean, if you're gonna upgrade, you can upgrade. And again, these aren't Moser axles, these are the factory axles that came out of the Chevelle SS. You could reuse your axles, all you need is a box of studs. Part number. 610-157, made by Dorman. Um, O'Reilly sells them. You can buy them by the box. Uh, AutoZone won't sell you the box. They'll, they'll bullshit you and try to sell you like seven at a time or some shit. I mean, who the fuck wants that? And the other key ingredient is these plates. Uh, I got them from BRP Hot Rodding. The back brakes of my 68 Firebird here, I've used them for several years now. I've thrown trailers with them. They're the exact same brakes, and these are the exact same plates I've been using. These are brand new because they're coming in, they're, you know, they're being put in. I bought them a couple days ago. Good guy. Uh, I've dealt with them before again. These are these plates. If you can make these plates yourself, go ahead, but, I mean, they're only 40 bucks. Yeah, here's Mudka, my cat. But, uh, anyways, like I was saying, I gave you the part number to the Dorman wheel studs you're going to need. You just need a cheap shot press to press them in. Uh, you can hammer them in, but your results may vary. And if you're gonna go any, if you're gonna do any kind of racing, hammering studs in might not be your best bet. Um, these plates are only a quarter inch thick, and there's ink plated. They're twenty bucks a pop, and if your time is worth any kind of money, you just buy them. They're not worth making. But I mean, you could make them if you wanted to. Uh, the reason these are here are because. Again, the bolt pattern from the backing plate, from the drums to the uh, 98 Camaro brakes, they're the same. These happen to come with, you know, bolts. I bought some bolts, but I guess I don't need them. Anyways, they're the same bolt pattern. However, in order to have the caliper sitting properly on the rotor, it is a floating caliper. However, for it to be centered. You need those quarter inch plates so that's what's up with that so uh i will actually show you how to break apart your rear end so it's completely idiot proof i mean i had a friend of mine the guy with the nova you guys know him double he thought you had to change your entire axle to put this brakes on the back of a car i told him that no you don't you only need 200 dollars a junkyard set of 98 camaro brakes 20 dollar box of studs and a 40 dollar set of plates and you can put axles or put axles put disc brakes on an eight and a half inch rear end, that's what he's got. You can put them on the 8.2 inch rear end, the old 10 bolts, or you can put them on the 8.8 .8 inch 12 bolts. The, the brake flange is the same. Just keep that in mind. And the bolt pattern, as long as it's four and three quarter, is gonna be the same for, this, for, the, uh, for the axles, so that the rotors are gonna work. This is a set I bought for $180. Um, you can find them all day for that price. This set happened to be drilled and slotted to match the front Corvette brakes that have been going on in my 67 Tempest. So this is why I bought these. So I'm the rotors are in decent shape. I'll just clean them up Calipers are in great shape. They're made in Australia by PBR. They're the same people that make calipers for 
the later model Mustangs and so on and so on. Um, GM doesn't make their own brakes anymore. News flash. But again, these are the brakes. Another key thing about these is uh, they're reversible. So when you put them on, it doesn't matter if you use the left or the right side on the right or left. Just keep in mind on the A bodies right here, you have a shock. Uh, well, you can tell where the shock is. So pretend, pretend my wrench is a shock. So if you put on the calipers backwards, they're going to interfere with that shock. So it's too easy. I just make sure the bleed nipples upwards. I find whichever set backing plate puts the caliper towards the front, and there would be no interference with the suspension of an A body. Um, they're reversible in a sense, as long as the, the bleed nipples, you know, facing up, so you could actually bleed all the air out of it. The other key thing to look for if you look browsing junkyards is these parking shoes are really handy. They're they're amazing. They're good emergency brakes. However, I bought a set before where the the shoe liner was gone on one side and I had to go get a parking shoe and they're $43. If you're only buying, you know, $150, $200 set of brakes, you don't want to go ahead and get another, you know, $43 expense when you could just go ahead and cherry pick the brakes you need. Because these parking brakes literally last the life of a vehicle. You don't use a parking brake to slow a vehicle down other than shenanigans on the road or just literally parking. So they don't wear. So make sure the ones you get are in good shape because buying them is expensive and not worth the hassle. So if you get a set, make sure these two caliper bolts are here. The caliper is in decent shape. Again, the caliper, if it's in bad shape, you can rebuild it, but make sure you're priced importantly because they're dirt cheap. Um, these happen to come with with the four with the four bolts I need, so they're all right. Well, let me get right into it. I loosened three of the bolts, so I'm not wasting your time. They're gonna be 9 16 bolts. I'm going to go ahead and loosen the fourth one with the breaker bar. Uh, I happen to have the axle held in place because it's just sitting on jack stands right now. And once you break it loose, go ahead and take your wrench, put it in a regular ratchet wrench, and undo it. Next, once you undo the bolts, there are the bolt size in case you need bolts or you're buying them ahead of time is 3 8 16. Remember that. So if you're going to buy some grade A hardware, um, just remember that they're 3 8 bolts. The head size on them is 9 16 wrench. And the thread pitch is dash 16. That's in case you guys are wondering. Also, while you have this apart, um, I'm going to make it a separate video in the future, but you go ahead and change your wheel bearings out. They are a lot easier to change than you would think, and it's just something you can do in your own garage. You can rent the tool to do it, and by rent, I mean you pay up front for the price of the tool at AutoZone or Advance. Any, any reputable parts place will rent you the tool. If you don't return it, you just simply don't get your money back, and you keep the tool. Frankly, it's, it's a pretty handy tool and it's only 30 bucks. Return it, it's not that big a deal. Um, all it is is a slide hammer. You rent that and then you rent the extension to pull various size bearings out. And you pluck it in, rip it out. I'll show you a video, don't worry. Um, those of you who know how to do it, you know, will appreciate me not wasting your time. Those of you who don't know how to do it, it's fine. Um, there'll just be a separate video for it. So once you get the four bolts out, come here. The brake line right here is attached right here. So you undo the brake line and you can pull the entire backing plate off. Um, in this case, it still has the brake cable on it, you set it aside. So what you get right here is a dirty but workable surface. Now again, this is where the plates come in. The plates, uh, if you notice, are the exact same bolt pattern as the 69 Chevelle SS axle. Also the exact same bolt pattern as the above mentioned vehicles that I've already mentioned. 
you know, 70s Novas, 80s S10s, 80s Camaros, anything, you name it. GM did not change their backing plate uh, bolt pattern for a few years because changes like that cost money. Because you gotta, you gotta invent new tools to be able to manufacture certain things. And, you know, when you're trying to sell a product, little changes like that don't need to happen. So you just thread the bolts in. Um, what I advise to stay away from is the brakes on a 98 Camaro are amazing. They're good little brakes made in Australia. The rear axle is a pile of shit. Do not go ahead and swap in the entire axle assembly. It's a huge hassle. First off, uh, and second off, it's a seven and a half inch ring gear. It is a complete pile of crap. So, I mean, there's a reason why those guys, once you know, once they make start making power, switch to a, a custom 12 bolt or a nine inch rear end. Um, and that's because those axles are horrible. They got good brakes though, so keep that in mind. These brakes. Again, don't pay more than two hundred dollars for them. If if somebody wants more than two hundred dollars, um, go go somewhere else. It's that easy. I paid one eighty for this, plus shipping, which because they're pretty heavy, so it was like forty dollars shipping, and I paid two twenty for the entire setup, shipped to my house. If I had gone local and found them in a in a junkyard, they would have been a lot cheaper. Now, the only thing to keep in mind about this is the brake hoses are a metric bubble flare. In the 90s, Chevy went to a metric brake system. They Actually, they went metric everything, really. Um, so, you're going to need a adapter. It's a little brass fitting. And if your brake lines, like these lines are in really good shape. There's no need for me to change them out. If your brake lines are in are in decent shape. I'm gonna go ahead and bend these. So they don't so they face upwards. Anyways, if your brake lines are in good shape, see so I bent mine so it's out of the way. Um but again like I was saying if they're in decent shape you can just reuse them. Uh just get the adapter for them. AutoZone sells them, advanced sells them, everybody sells them. What we're looking for is metric bubble flare adapter to the old inverted flare standard lines. This is a 3 16 line. I don't know what thread pitch that is, but if you go to a parts store and you look for a standard inverted flare 3 16 line, the parts guy should be able to know what adapter you're talking about. On. You grab the axle that has the longer studs. You slide it in. Your rear end wouldn't be apart as far as mine is right now. I'm changing gear ratio so it's completely apart. Uh, but I'll show you. All you would need is the center pin to be gone and the back cover off to slide axles on and off. It's not that complicated. You put the caliper or the rotor on. Make sure there's no grease. Grease warps brakes. Okay. Now. Also notice that the axle hub bore is identical to that of my axles. That's because Chevy has a 70.3 millimeter hub bore that had not changed. I don't know when they started it. I do know that any 60s cars I've ever dealt with had that same hub bore. So like I said, I don't know when they started. Alright, I'll 
pull that out later. But take these two bolts again. Remember, they, the bolts come with the price. If they don't, look for another set. They're a dime a dozen. There's so many of those Camaros out there. Uh, also, keep in mind, it doesn't have to be an SS. The V6 Camaro's got the same exact brakes. So. Side the caliper on. And. Bolted. Bolted onto the backing plate. As far as disassembly of the drum brake, unlike the front, the back brakes are not pressed on. They are simply slid over. So you would just sledgehammer it up until it comes off. Undo these 12 bolts, open the back cover, drain the oil, make sure you have a pan. Rotate the entire axle assembly until the little pin bolt faces you. Use a half inch wrench, undo the pin bolt, pull the pin out, pull out the center pin, push the axles in a quarter inch, pluck the C clip out with a set of pliers, and then slide the axle out. After you slide the axle out, you will have what you what I had here uh, a couple minutes ago, and you'll be able to undo the four bolts, put the spacer on, put this backing plate on. And there you go. Um, like I said, these are metric inverted flare or metric bubble flare hoses, and these are standard inverted flare hoses. And as you can see, the hose length is perfect for to do brake changes. You might, you know, bend it a little bit. Just be careful not to uh, not to break it when you're bending it. There you go. So all I need is the little adapter and I'll, I'll be plumbed with my line. That way the uh, center line on my pumpkin for the brake, that rubber hose, which is a wear item, it still be a stock 69 Chevelle item or, or a 68 Camaro or 72 Nova or whatever it happens to be. But uh, like I was saying, longer studs, a set of junkyard brakes. Remember, it doesn't have to be a V8 Camaro, it can be a 96 also. But it does have to be Camaro brakes, because these same calipers were used on Saturns, GTOs, and a couple other cars. But the mounting bracket is different, and you won't get the parking brake, which is a good piece of security. Now, as far as fabricating up, uh, this particular set came with mounting cable bracket, and it came with the parking brake cable assembly which I'll figure out how to mount once the rear end's in the car because I want to be able to route it around everything. Well, follow me and I will show you exactly how to press in studs. There's my five studs. Like I said, they come in boxes of ten. I need, I need, I need, I need. I have everything I need. I need a wrap. That's what I need. Slide your axle in. Use the V portion of your backing plates. This is the exact same procedure you would use to separate your drum hub from your drum on the front. Don't worry, that was all planned. Well, I mean, I didn't plan it for the jump, but... See? The studs come right out. This is the exact same thing you'll need to do, like I said, if you do any type of racing, so... These are a little jumpy. The other axle, they came out a little smoother. Perfectly. 
you don't want any rotational torque on your uh, press. Now, what I got now is a bare axle, no studs, and I do the exact opposite, take my five studs, put one in, uh, this happens to be an old wrench, about yay high. trying to use. It barely fits. Okay. Now, um, you can use a piece of tubing. There's all kinds of stuff you can use, but make sure it's squared up. Because like I said, you don't want any rotational torque when you're pressing Things in or out. There you go, nice and square. And the studs in the middle. Ease up on it, triple check your work. Make sure you're in the middle. Remember that it takes a serious amount of torque, so make sure it's not twisted. Because what will happen is the piece of pipe that you're using to press this on, or in my case a wrench, will come out, blind you, or you know, just do bad things overall. Now, make sure the threads aren't damaged and it's straight in. And the key is to make sure this head right here is flush. Hey, you just gotta do this four more times. Um, my axles agree to, that's a good thing. There you go, uh, keep on watching. Again, like I said, it's one of the more useful videos a lot of you guys have been asking. I don't know how long it took, but it was a handful of minutes. You could prep your axles ahead of time, I guess. But uh, it doesn't take long. There's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't upgrade a disc brakes in the back. They have less heat fade, but they still have a parking brake. So, there's no reason not to open it. Um, you guys already know, I tow entire cars with these brakes. Manual brakes, no booster. They're good brakes. So, as always, keep watching, and I'll make sure to help you guys out with more videos. And as always, keeping it real like none other.